December 14th meeting of the local historic district commission. And um, oh my God, I should, you know what? I didn't print out my, I have my agenda here. It's on my computer. Um, right. Yes, you need another computer. I do need another computer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, thank you. So um, we do not have any um, applications before no. us today. So I would doubt we probably have any members of the public even on, although Hilda Greenbaum might be covering us for the Amherst Indy. Um, I do not have any announcements. Uh, ben, do you? Um. No announcements that I can think of. Um, I think maybe uh, at some point, maybe this can be on unanticipated items or topic of a future meeting. I think for me personally being new to the commission, it might be nice to talk about kind of like the yearly rhythm of how the commission works. I understand obviously with the winters, there's fewer applications, but you know, Nate, Nate has described to me in the past how you know, in the winter and spring, you maybe you'll you'll like prepare like a mailing to send out to property owners, or maybe you just focus on new property owners just to uh, uh, let them know about the commission and what we do and how how the application process works. So um, I was just thinking that might be nice for me to kind of get acquainted hmm. with. Okay. At some point, but not, that do doesn't... that at some point, but um. Yeah, again, um, it's like you said, our busiest time is the spring and summer. Yeah. So just sort of zooming the big picture is, and it's interesting, because now that we're used to zooming, what sometimes gets to be an issue in the winter and certainly in the summer is with people traveling. Yeah. Particularly in the winter, because it's, you know, we tend to, all of us, you know, sometimes want to get away when it's cold. Yeah. So we've sometimes butted up against a quorum issue, but I, but I think, you know, this was, that was pre quarantine and before we were zooming. So, you oh, know. And, and snow days, you know, with the snowstorms were always a bit of an issue for us because, yeah. uh, you know, particularly uh, Marianne right. uh, was, uh, and she wasn't as mobile as the rest of us. So we had that uh, to contend with. So Zoom has taken that uh, problem and put it uh, in another room, really. Yes. So this is a great resource. Um, yeah. Because again, I mean, this this winter we won't be traveling. <laughs> no. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, uh, that is uh, sometimes an issue. And I have to say, in terms of the mailing that goes to residents, um, I think that's something that staff used to handle. But I mean, I would be happy to work with you on that. Again, last spring, we were so involved in the Amherst media really yeah. took us over. But I think it's an excellent idea. And particularly now, I mean, to do maybe this in January, you know, early part of uh, 2021 is to send out a mailing again to make everyone aware that we exist. Although if they go for a, um, you know, building permit, uh, they will let them know if they have to come before the commission. But just what the exemptions, our new exemptions yeah. are, and that might also let pe trigger people, because I think particularly in terms with the mini splits, which again, mm -hmm. won't be as much an issue because they're now exempt up to a certain number, but people were, in, were uh, do things and they have no idea they actually need a bill, they need a permission. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay, and that sounds good. There is a good. house on McClellan that it's a, old house it's little um but i remember documenting when we were doing the documentation to become a local historic district the original deed to the house is actually signed by emily dickinson's father who was the attorney who handled the transaction mm -hmm. and the woman who lives there is very elderly and i you know i walk by it a lot and i anyway i think maybe one of her children is helping to do some work there but there was something over the entryway which came off and you can just sort of see where it came off. And I don't know if they're planning to repair it, but that's something that should come before us. And I'm just wondering, is that something you might send them a letter? If I, how, like, I don't think they know that making changes to the facade, particularly if it's her son who doesn't live there would know that. Well, yeah, typically the way we catch things is because people submit um, for a building permit and then uh, our, 
you know, permit administrators, they know to flag things that are in the historic district. So I'm but not what sure. What if they just take it off and not know that they have, you know, they do something that they don't. Even know they need a building permit right. for. Um, well, that's interesting. I'm not sure. My understanding, I mean, uh, reading the bylaw, I thought it said something about, um, you know, changes which require a building permit come before. But I think they're doing this work. You, right? I don't. Yeah, they're just. Yeah. I think there's, uh, you know, a number of people that don't. Not only don't they know, do they not know what uh, their obligations are in regard to this commission? They don't even fully appreciate their obligations in regard to the building code and the, right. right and huh. and uh, so. Uh, I mean, and it's it used to it has changed. So it used to be that you didn't need to get a building permit to uh, to reshingle your roof, mm -hmm. and for the longest time now you have. I'm going back a lot of years, but the um, what what is I think the uh, what is required uh, is you know isn't isn't it, it changes from time to time or it is augmented. So it's possible that people will do things uh, oblivious to both obligations. Right. And then I suppose um, that just becomes the building department's uh, first problem and our second problem. Unless we, as Jennifer, I think is suggesting, we want to be proactive. And I guess the question is, do we? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think in the case, Jennifer, of that house on McClellan, it's very good to be proactive because yeah. I am quite sure that he has no idea that there are any kinds of restrictions at all. And he's just trying to help his mother, but he- Right. You know, yeah. and again, if it was a hardship, we would work with that. Right. But I don't, um, yeah. So maybe then if I give you the address? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did do that at 100 Fearing Street. Okay because mm -hmm. they were doing a major job and didn't come before us. And, and we had neighbors on Fearing Street contacted the members of the commission and said, hmm, did you approve this? And we were like, no, it never came before us. So then they had to stop. I mean, that was a much bigger deal. They had to stop construction and come before us. Right. But this is just a little, but I, yeah. Okay, so I'll give you the address. Yeah, and well, I think even if it's little, it kind of, it sets a precedent because what if they're also preparing for a much larger project? you know, and, and so it's good to know. Um, Bruce? Um, I'm just thinking of, uh, about this particular situation or this type of situation. And, and the resolution of the moment is that Ben or, or the town staff will take initiative, I guess, by going down and, and perhaps knocking on the door and talking. Um, I'm wondering uh, about now, um, what I guess there's four of you now are Residents. I mean, the commission is largely made up of uh, uh, commissioners who are resident within the district. Um, and so that means that half of, or two thirds of us are a short walk from any of these houses. Um, so the question I have is of the four commissioners who are a short walk from any of the houses, how would you feel about um, going and knocking on the door and doing what? we've ascribed to Ben. And the follow-up question with that is, how do we as a commission feel about our associates, our, our, our colleague commissioners doing stuff like that? Is that considered to be um, a vigilante act or exactly. which we which we might uh, think is not appropriate? Or is it a proactive, constructive act of building community understanding and, and strengthening the respect for the bylaw and so forth, which on that hand, we would say is, is a positive and constructive. So I, I'm wondering whether, whether we do it now or we schedule it for later, just discussing how we might uh, do that because it, there may be advantages to us doing it as commissioners, you know, as resident to resident without the perhaps, um, the perceived perhaps heavy hand of the town coming down um or 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 it could be considered the other way i i don't exactly know how we should uh, regard this but i think it's a question 
uh, worth asking because I think there's pretension, there's pro, there's 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 benefit, there's pro and con on both sides, and we should we should have a. I think we should, as a commission, um, make a deliberate uh, decision on this. Yeah, Greta. Well, I think if it were me and I were working on the house, I would prefer a letter from the town that was kind of neutral and just explained. But I also would like if the people on the committee or commission would stop by and let me know I'm in a local historical district, but separate that from telling me I'm doing something I shouldn't do. So we, I have a new neighbor next door. She was thrilled to read about um, everything the local historical district has written about each house. And she went to the website and looked at it and was thrilled to know that. But I wouldn't want my first interaction with her to have been telling her she was breaking some of the town bylaws. That's just so. Or was maybe about to. Or maybe was about to. I would like that to come from the town in kind of a neutral way. So she wouldn't next time she saw me think of me in that respect. But she was thrilled to know it was a local historical district and read the research that Steve Bloom and other people did. That's so. great, thank you. Uh, Karen? Um, how about, uh, I agree with Greta. I would feel the same way. I'd like a neutral thing to come from the town, but how about this neutral thing from the town also mentioning the names of the um, commissioners in the neighborhood that this person could contact with questions and clarity and say we're you know there might this might be difficult to understand and you shouldn't look at it like that and we're all ready uh, to to um, to have a neighborly meeting and, and explain anything something like that be supportive I think that sounds good yeah I think that's a great idea and just in this particular case She's an elderly woman. She was thrilled when we were doing on the study committee to become an LHD. She showed me this deed, you know, she's, as she should be very proud that there's his, you know, I'm forgetting his uh -huh. first name, but Mr. Dickinson's name on her deed. Um, and it's a very modest, but old house. And I, mm. so she, you know, and I don't know if maybe she's infirm now. And so one of her children are helping and I wouldn't want them to feel under attack at all. But I think if there's also a way to be supportive of someone and say, you know, you have a house, even though it's it's very modest, that's special to our neighborhood, you know, sort of to put it. Yeah, I agree. It have you do, definitely don't want someone to feel like the law is coming down on them in any way. Yeah, Karen. And the laws, their neighbors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, talking to him um, at length when he was explaining why he was taking down all the trees and cutting them all down. I am, I surmise that his mother, that he's doing a lot of things on his own now, that his mother is now incapacitated enough that she's probably not even aware exactly of what all is happening. And um, I think he's, he's a nice person. If I think it's gonna be, you do have to approach him in the right way, but I think he would probably welcome uh, knowing what the, the sort of the steps are of getting permission, but then also people really reaching out to him and saying, you know, this is great what you're doing, but if you want, yeah, it, yeah. It, that's tricky. And it's something that I think we should step in pretty soon because I think he's, he's, I think he has a lot of time on his hands right now. And this is what he's mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. What's the what is the nature of the work? You said facade work. Well, what I've just noticed, you can see where it looks like there was just maybe something over the front door, because you can see where it was taken down. Okay. I don't know if you're aware of anything in more detail, Karen. I you know the I think you saw that there was a lot of moisture damage from the plants. So it used to be there was a lot of greenery around it, bushes and trees, and he's kind of clear cut it. So wow. um, not only the trees in the yard, but also everything, every tree that, and every bush that was leading up to the house, is just kind of radically chopped off. I was yeah. wondering what was happening there. Yeah. I think I actually, I may have it, I take a picture of everything. 
I may have a picture mm -hmm. with the address, but if I can't find it, I'll walk around the corner. I think you might be right, Karen, that something could happen quickly, so. Yes, uh, it, that having a, uh, maybe, um, I, I understand and, and, and agree with what was said about uh, that the role should fall primarily with Ben or with, with town staff. But uh, what we could do in support is what you uh, suggested, Jennifer, which is uh, um, taking a photograph and uh, maybe annotating it in any way appropriate and sending it to Ben just to make yeah. his job I'll a little easier. Today, well, tomorrow, it's a little dark yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. Yeah, but this is, um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely, and, you know, maybe be, it's hard to sort of put this etch it in stone because, it's a lot of gray of how you handle it. So it's hard to, you know- We'll get better at it with yeah. practice. We just keep talking about it occasionally and, and refine our act, so to speak. Right, because again, this would, yeah. It's not a case where someone's- Am I- Go on, who's- Am I, am I in, do you, do you see me now? I had trouble getting in, it's Peggy. Oh, hi Peggy, hi Peggy. No. We're not seeing your face. It looks can like your video's off. But, but we, we can, can hear you. Yeah. We saw you before. Now, now. There you are. There now you I'm, are. Now I'm in. Yes. I had a lot of trouble. I had a lot of trouble getting in. I'm sorry I'm late. I've been trying for half an hour. Oh, I'm sorry. Connect. So we'll have to talk about the connections because it's very frustrating to spend. Anyway, okay, prepare I'm for sorry. me and then I couldn't do it. So anyway, I'm sorry to come No, no, that's in. okay. I'm sorry it was but, so frustrating. Can you see us? Very frustrating. Okay. I can. Great. Yes, I, so, yeah. I, I, yes, whoever was talking, I was, yeah. Okay, Karen. Um, are you sure he's not living there? I, I don't know. I, I think he's living there. And I think if we had these rules of the town and somebody like you or me brought it over with a little, another thing that we wrote and said, this is the name of your neighborhood um, pe commissioners that are on this. And we're happy to, to clarify any of this, or, you know, we just want to be helpful just in a nice way, right? That we should just get that over to him as quickly as possible, I think. Can I, can I ask which house we're talking, we're talking about? I don't have the, it's a house on which, McClellan. Is it the hall? Oh, I know which one. Was, was it, I remember know which the one. minister, what's, what is her name? Yes, he was, a, the, her husband yeah. was a minister. Isn't it Hall, their last name maybe Hall? It might be, yes. They live next door to the Glennons. Yeah. And, so um, it's a very it, big, big, nice lot, kind of a, a, a double lot, somebody was right. saying. And a teeny, teeny little house, which was sequestered in there in a kind of a beautiful way. And now if you go by, you think, uh oh, somebody's about to clear cut and tear down the house and everything. Huh. I thought oh, maybe wow. they were gonna re-landscape because it was so yeah. But I shocking. think that, uh, that the son, um, who's a, a very nice person, I think he has really no money. I think he lost his job and I think he's divorced and he just kind of welcomed the fact that he had the time now to devote to helping his mother and helping with the house. Oh, that's nice. He did have a lot of problems. Right. That, that, so. Right. Okay, thank there's you. An, there's another house, that, uh, another house that's not in the historic district. Uh, that I'm that we've been concerned about. It's on the corner of Mattoon and Triangle. Right. And is everyone, anyone else aware of that house and the condition that it's in? I would have to drive by. You'd have to drive by if you if if you were going to the high school. It's, it's you see right. it right on the corner there. You're turning. Yeah, I know that one. I walk turn. by it. Yeah, yeah. I I, right. I got it. Right. And well, I would think that's something man, that maybe even if it's not in local historic district, you might be able to bring to Rob Mora's attention, who's the building commissioner. Mm -hmm. It's Good tricky because I'm, I'm a neighbor and I certainly don't want to be, uh, I wouldn't want it to feel like right. it was me against him in any way. I don't want to generate oh, So it's that, an owner uh, occupied. Well, he seems to come and go. I don't quite. I don't quite know, um, and I don't know him personally. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So I, this may be off. I don't know if we should have this conversation offline, but John Thompson is a very, very nice man. And if you spoke to him, I think he might approach them in um, a non, very non-confrontational way. Uh huh. Okay. Can you send me that contact information? Yes. And, yeah, yeah and I'll do that. I'll talk it over and with he's actually to get someone to get on the memo, which Ben will give a background of how that sort of draft memo came to be. But he's the senior code enforcement okay. officer. You know, and again, we've been, you know, I think in that sense, lucky in Amherst because we are small. You can, you know, call people like that. And, uh, you know, I know I've actually contacted him about a house in our neighborhood that um, an uh, occupant owner was living in and it turned out she needed a lot of help and he was um, actually very helpful, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. right. without it being like the, you know, law was, you know. It's, he's, yeah, well, yeah, this man is, this young man has done some work on the house and he's clearly doing what he can, but it, it's, it, and it's better than it was, okay. but it's still a concern. Um, yeah, Bruce. And it has a Jim, history. Jim, Jim. I'm sorry. History to it. To say that Jennifer it, it was owned by the people who uh, founded the Amherst Bulletin, I think. Oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, Jim wanted to add something. Uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I've worked with John Thompson before on a few people over over the years that have needed a little extra help and guidance, and he is a perfect diplomat and um, non-confrontational. Uh, I'm afraid that if one of us from the committee, uh, commission actually went to someone that we felt needed our advice, it could be interpreted wrong and might be mm -hmm. some sort of reflection coming back here. And I think both uh, Greta and Karen have, have mentioned before that it probably should be somebody from the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems, uh, my, I was simply asking the question. I didn't have a, a, a position on that, but it seems that uh, the, the consensus pretty much is uh, with, with you and Greta and, and Karen. And is it possible okay. to be a little individual? Like if Karen, you know, knows this person, you know, that. Yeah. Question, the, the question is, do we wait, do we put our name as somebody that they could talk to and wait right. for them to come and then, or not? In other words, do. All right. I think we decided that that was a good idea. And, and, and you know, I think we're, we're working this out as we go along. And so, but for the moment, it, it sounds like the consensus of the commission is, as Jim just most recently stated it, that we, we uh, uh, don't um, take initiative, that we, support Ben in the way we discussed in taking initiative and with what uh, Karen, uh, Karen suggested, uh, we make it possible for a resident to reach out uh, to local, uh, to resident commissioners uh, in the neighborhood and then see how that, what that gets. See how that goes. Yeah, I was gonna say, so um, the, property on Amity and Lincoln that's uh, managed by Eagle Crest that was in disrepair at the paint was peeling. John Thompson got that painted. <laughs> wow. wow, good for him. Right, yeah. so he's someone, yeah, he went and talked to the owner. So as Jim said, he's uh, a great um, intermediary. <laughs> he's a real gem that the town has. Yes, and one of the ways in which you could, I mean, I know we're about to discuss the, uh, the possible uh, expansion of the bylaw to include uh, um, some force uh, of, of the local uh, ordinance for this. But um, there is a, a dimension of so-called soft power in this too, I guess, where people like John, and I agree with uh, Jim, uh, I've had uh, many dealings with John as well, I mean, and, and find him exactly the same. The people who've got that, you know, basic diplomatic uh, skills and, 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 uh, and personality traits can uh, mention to property owners who are like this uh, example that you cite, Jennifer, and say, you know, 
it really would be a good idea for you to paint your house because uh, right now it's uh, it's it, it risks being a, an example for um, leveraging the town to make a, a bylaw. And uh, if you want to, if you don't like that idea, you might want to paint your house and and not give the commission the uh, ammunition that it would otherwise have. So it can be used that way as well, even if we decided not to uh, uh, go with this proposal of yours for the moment, Jennifer, I have no idea what the town would decide, but even if the decision is to hold off, we should not hold off um, using the kind of persuasive power that the possibility of such uh, an ordinance um, uh, allows. Right, I think that works. That is actually a tactic, you know, with the with the major landlords. I certainly, you know, we wouldn't use that in this particular case with the resident on. McClellan. Oh, oh, yeah. good lord, no, no, I don't no. Know that. no, 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 I know that. You no, know, you are. I the, think they have taken it off. I don't know if it was to repair it or he just didn't like. You know. No, I, I, I think we've done with that yeah. place on McClellan. Right. We've spent half an hour on it, yeah, and yeah. it wasn't even on the agenda. <laughs> but, but. Speaking to the uh, the bylaw uh, potential, your 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 memo, which I read, uh, suggests that the real problem is with the institutional uh, landlords, and that's right. why I said what I said. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, Karen, did you want to add something? I wanted to say that I am convinced that there's just a, a lack of knowledge. So often, I mean, how is one to know if you move in here? Uh, that there is even any kind of regulation from the historicals. Those of us who were in a historic, we got something a year ago or so, but somebody that's new and taking over his mother's house is not going to know. So, and it's important that they know, right? Because they're in the process of doing a lot of things. So how can we get that information out? Well, I think that gets to what Ben brought up about in terms of our calendar, that something usually gets sent at the beginning of the year. So okay. there is, I guess, a yeah, a few okay. month lag, but you can take that, Ben. And okay. I guess if we, so that that every year we would send, every year what has been sent out to everyone in the neighborhoods is information about the local historic district commission. Yeah, uh, and we can yeah, this, no, no. we'll add our exemptions. Right. Yeah. Okay. But. So maybe with that, Ben, we should move to the next agenda item. It seems like, you know, we just sort of segue naturally yeah. into that. And you can, you know, tell us how we get to the memo. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, I, I basically um, set up a meeting with Rob Mora, who's the building commissioner, with Nate, who you all know, and then with John Thompson, who's the, you know, he's the code enforcement officer. And I just wanted to kind of gauge their thoughts on the minimum maintenance bylaw as or as they would be the ones to ultimately enforce it. And I think, and I, I was kind of curious what other means to that end there are like our, you know, the, the town has a lot of different avenues for enforcement, whether it's the state building code, whether it's, um, you know, and that's both health and building code violations. And then there's um, kind of like, you know, things embedded in the rental registration bylaw. And then, um, so I was kind of curious from John and Rob, what, um, what other ways are there to enforce and, and um, kind of what their thoughts were, were just wanting to get a better sense of what the exact issues were that the local historic district commission members are concerned about because there's a lot of things that do fall under building and health code violations um, that can be enforced and that sometimes don't get enforced because they're a little bit um, just fly under the radar and you know the the hell the state building code and, and I'm sure Bruce and others maybe know this is very complicated and very lengthy and very wordy. And so it's like, there's some cases where it's just like, it's, it's sometimes hard to interpret, but it's also because there's so much in there, it's a little bit flexible in that sense. Um, and so, you know, like for example, peeling paint, you know, you could stretch that to be like, you know, a, 
paint, a solid layer of paint does protect the envelope of the house from moisture and from, you know, pests encroaching. And like, would, would that hold up like after a lot of scrutiny? Maybe not, but it's like a way to, to te technically use this state building code to, to enforce certain things. So like, I'm not saying that would be the ideal route to go, but um, so basically that led John and Rob to say like, you know, it'd be great if the commission could put together a memo describing the exact issues that they're concerned about. And then they can look that over and see, um, you know, what the best route is to go forward. Cause you know, truth be told, an another bylaw, you know, there's certainly some benefits to it, but it also puts more strain on the building commissioner and the um, inspection staff who would actually need to enforce it. And, you know, they, they're they already stretched pretty thin as it is. And if they got more staff, the staff would probably be used to enforce other things mostly to right. do with There's like not a great appetite for this i guess yeah mostly for student rentals um which you know is related to this but um i guess um they just wanted to make sure you know it's it doesn't make sense to write a new bylaw if it's not something that can be enforced because then it's just sitting there um so i guess yeah that's kind of what led to the idea of kind of putting together this memo um, and really spelling out what the issues are um, and and then kind of allowing John and Rob to digest it and then kind of um, see what their thoughts are for moving forward because um, maybe they'll come back and say you know we hear you you know but we think we can enforce this issue through the state building code, this issue through the health code, this issue through here. All we need to do is just have a better line of communication or something, but um, maybe, you know, a, a bylaw could also be necessary as well. So, and I will say too, on, on a related note, um, I'm helping the historical commission write a new general bylaw related to the, uh, demolition delay and historical preservation. And I've come to learn that the process for enacting a new general bylaw is is pretty lengthy um, because it's, you know, you need to, you present to town council as like a, your first step and the commission would be the sponsor. And then the town council then refers it to two other, to, I guess it would be the, CRC subcommittee and then the GOL subcommittee and then for like two months they have you know subsequent meetings where they read read through the bylaw um, make changes and suggestions and then um, you present and then maybe two or two months later or so you present that final finalized version to town council hopefully with the recommendation of the subcommittees and then it would ultimately be approved then but so I just kind of wanted to it's a cumbersome now is it the same process if we were to add add it as a section to the LHD bylaw um like the rules and regulations yeah if it was just going to be like another you know section letter or whatever you know another well just well, add it on to so the I'm just uh want to be careful with the terminology the the LHD bylaw sits within the Amherst Town General Bylaws. We right. we have our separate rules and regulations. Right. So if we added it on as as somehow like the Edgar Town. It's just a part of their local historic district. It, would it still have to go before town council? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, especially if there's an enforcement um, kind of mechanism um, that you know, there would need to be an appeal process, a grievance process, and that that would need to sit in the general bylaw. I guess I know I'm sounding like a broken record because I've said it before, you know, my issue is just the picture of that house at, on Fearing <laughs> Street. When something is at that level of disrepair to be told that there's nothing the town could do about it, that's where the problem was. I mean, it's really not getting to mm -hmm. minor, but when you get, when something gets to the point that it looks like um, 
a slum for back, lack of a better word. Yeah. Owned by a, you know, someone who owns properties throughout town. It's not a hardship situation. It doesn't seem like we should be told, oh, well, there's nothing we can really do about that. I mean, right. you know, again, John Thompson went and spoke to the owner and they did make some repairs. So that's kind of our, that's how it works. But so I guess that's- Those pictures right. were amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. And also that's worked for John. So uh, it might be more trouble for John to go and talk to them about painting if he, if he has to use this, the soft power persuasive route that I outlined before, rather than simply reminding them of the, um, their obligation. Um, so in, in, in either case, uh, the town is, the town staff are involved. So uh, I think we should, uh, Jennifer, you're, you're just strong about this. You've been strong since the, the, the afternoon you assumed the, the position as chair. And uh, mm -hmm. so I've known this from that moment. <laughs> and we've, um, broken and we've record. Uh, no, 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 not That's, at all. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Con I'm consistently uh, concerned, and and also I think uh, um, careful and thoughtful about it because you know we had this year of uh, preoccupation with the um, Amos Media. Actually, well, yes, it was a year. Yeah, uh, uh, and mm -hmm. clearly we, uh, you, you just put it aside because you know we had. So, but my sense is that using that example, whether it's been painted or not, because you've got the paid photographs before it is, and saying, um, should we not have a mechanism? And should the property owners uh, not feel that they want a mechanism to not have their property or the threat of their property values lowered by the indifference of a particular person on the street? Uh, I think, you know, one can make a persuasive argument for that and that the town should uh, care and, and uh, you know, challenge the town council to say, we don't No, I'm sorry, it's not important enough. I mean, I think the way you're fired up about this, it would be difficult for the council to uh, uh, sit there and, and um, just ignore it. And I think the, the, the first victim of that are the tenants, because I know, you know, that's a, mm -hmm. yeah. But Karin, did you um, had your hand up? Yeah, I think taking that example is a is a good litmus test for us because you're saying can these things be addressed through the other things like health and all these things. In this particular case with the pictures that Jennifer showed, could any of those things that you mentioned that they said, well, can't it be addressed through this or that, could they have come in and helped? Uh, or, or, and if not, as Jennifer said, there's nothing the town can do, then that's a perfect example of something where there's a need for something else, I think. And could we, along those lines, Karen, I mean, because I agree, Ben, if there's, you know, I don't want us to go through an exercise if there's really nothing it's not, we can do, but if we, presented that to Ben, uh, to um, Rob and John Thompson, like, could they say, well, that could be addressed, you know, through one of these other codes? I mean, what I, what I, as I recall the conversation, because I had a conversation with Rob Morrow on the phone first, is he said that they, that they had given the owner their permission to post, because you could see there's a for rent sign, that they told them they could begin to rent it, even though there were a few more items that had to be done. But, and I think they might've had to fix some of the, the struts that were out of the balusters, but there was nothing mm -hmm. that they could do for the peeling paint. Right. You know, and, and the peeling paint was extreme, you know, like yeah. you saw, right. I've never come across any provision in a bylaw, in a building code that uh, would have me repaint a building. Yeah, and there should be. Um, I mean, lead and so forth, but that's another matter, and it doesn't ask you to repaint it. It simply asks you to mitigate. And I think that the other Eagle Crest property on Lincoln, you know, next, you know, the one like maybe it's two houses down from. Right, right. right. Not uh, the same property owner, almost has has been at times in the same level of disrepair. That is absolutely true. Yeah, 
Well, um, uh, I read what you sent out, uh, Jennifer, and I have a few opinions. I don't know how you want to go ahead with this. Do you want to do you want to put it up and go through it, or yeah, I think have we all read we, it, or what? Yeah, and Ben, I guess then the question becomes because I sent it to Ben, and then Ben, I think had. I mean, do you think Ben, it's still worth sending? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay, definitely. I thought maybe you had gotten feedback that oh, there's nothing they can really. But so you think if you feel that it's, you know, we should still pursue it, I would, I would very much like to put it up and have everybody's input. Yeah, no, I think it, um, we can, you, you put together a great draft and then um, we can take some time the rest of this meeting to just maybe go through it, um, kind of craft it together, finalize it together. Um, and then I can send it to Rob and John, and then maybe hopefully by our next meeting, you know, we can have a response from them. Um, yeah, so, so feel free to, you know, a lot of the, you know, just, you know, do whatever, make it <laughs> add. Um, and then I added the your pictures at the bottom here. Okay. Thank so, you. yeah, wow, this is. Yeah, well, the, those missing balusters certainly can be addressed by the building code. Right, right. Um, yeah, so somehow one... I love the for rent sign. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I have to say, when I, I first, the first call I made was to the rental company, and they did tell me on the phone that they were finishing up some work in the back, but they had no plans to do anything to the front. And that's when I called Rob Morrow anyway. Yeah. Right. Good for you, Jennifer. Yeah, this is the way, uh, one of the ways it works, I guess. Yeah. Uh, to that extent, there is a bit of vigilanteism going on, but it's rather small v and, and uh... right. All righty. So this is kind of like your intro statement. Um, peeling paint, missing banisters are not the result of property of financial hardship, but rather the refusal to make repairs that are not required by code and enforced by the town. I had a couple of uh, observations or comments on that first paragraph. Is is it appropriate to deal with it paragraph by paragraph? Is yeah, that I the think way that's you want great. to deal with it? Yeah, I think that's um, great. I thought that um, you're a little um, overly focused on, on so I thought um, uh, uh, so uh, what's the north um, Sunset Hemisphere is, and even the north sides of Amity Street, instead of the houses that clearly appear to be suffering, mm -hmm. I think it should say these houses, these houses. That, okay. uh, clearly appear to be suffering. And then further down um, where it says uh, porches in advanced stage of disrepair are not the result of the property owner's hardship. Um, I would say are often or generally uh, because we don't know for a fact right. that's right. all the case and then okay. but rather often the refusal to make repairs that are not required by code so I thought I'd just um, soften it so it doesn't look like we're um, talking about every uh, dilapidated building is um, is 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 not mm -hmm. is unaffected by the owner's financial hardship right was there another edit you wanted me to make? Uh, uh, often not, there's a little bit. The... Uh, often not, and, and then at the last line, uh, make repairs that are uh, uh, a result of the financial issue, but rather the refusal to make repairs that are not required by... Good. Yeah, maybe, maybe you should say often the refusal but rather, uh, I'm not sure whether you need uh, uh, another often after. Um, I think I'll leave that to okay. your yeah. grammatical yeah, yeah, uh, thing. The, the, in, the essence is you know, right. what I'm saying is just try and soften that a bit. So now I'm good. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess, yeah, we can continue going through it um, paragraph by paragraph. Um, and I don't know, like when you said it, Ben, it has to go before the full council and all these committees. I don't know, you know, we had talked about the last meeting, maybe doing a pilot just in the LHDs. Is that something that 
is is there any vehicle for doing that so it doesn't have to you know go through the bureaucracy so to speak yeah yeah because the the local historic district you know the commission you guys are empowered by the town's general bylaw um which you know gives kind of like defines the local historic districts and gives the commission you kind of like lays out the approval and review process for the certificates of appropriateness so that's all embedded within the general bylaw of the town right um, so, so we couldn't even do a pilot project without it going through yeah do you think it when any suggestion of a pilot makes it more palatable to them yeah yeah Literally. certainly so yeah you, so what do commissioners what do you think it should that stay there i mean i don't know if it's in that particular paragraph i think it gets more down um below. what are you asking what do you yeah i'm kind of asking you if you think all of you that that is a way to go i mean that that might make it more like again palatable to the council to give it a try i don't think we're at the point of trying to decide whether it's palatable to the council or or to the, the town right. uh, staff i think we have to basically decide to how are we going to represent your concern jennifer on behalf of the commission so i i think you've done this uh, i i would that might be crossing a bridge before we get to it. I think that basically you, you've written a preamble, which we're now looking at, and then- Right, uh, okay, keep going. Um, it's later on, I mean, it does, somewhere in there, I yeah. did talk about, oh, I think I said the proposal, well, we can keep going. This is the pilot right. sentence, yes. yeah. So in that second paragraph, uh, just another, um, we're in the middle says the yeah. front of you say the front of the residence is not considered a structural code violation and in the absence of a minimum maintenance bylaw i would change the to a so it says the front of a residence is not considered a structural code violation and the absence and i would put in the absence of something like a minimum maintenance bylaw um, right. okay. So it is a preamble. So right. it's really you're you're leading up to uh, the what we're proposing. Yeah, the proposed solution. Okay, thank you. Appreciate but it. I mean, I don't know. Like, jo like Rob might come back and say, "Well, actually, there are things we can do with the building code for the front of the residence. Like, I think the balusters on a porch would fall under that." Um, yeah, but how much of it? And then, so he'll basically respond to this thing that Jennifer's put together and we'll say, okay, so 20% of Jennifer's concerns can be addressed by the, um, by the app, by, by the judicious application of existing uh, uh, regulation. Um, what about the other 80%? 80%? Or right. if he says that 80% can be addressed and we're concerned about 20%, then uh, you know, that would, exactly. that would tell That's us something. 20%. Right. But, but I think the bottom one is like we was saying no, no property should be allowed to look like these pictures. Yeah. Right, right. So we'll, uh, so you've done what was suggested. You've put together this thing. So we make sure it, it now comes from us rather than you. And we <laughs> give it to uh, Mara uh, with the question, um, why don't you want to do, uh, why uh, is this not what we should be doing? And if he comes back and says, well, we don't need to because of all of right. then. Then, 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 you know, basically it's like tennis. We're serving the ball and then we'll see what yeah. his return of serve looks like. And if it's a sloppy return of serve, we belt it down the sideline and say, that's our point. Or right, exactly. if he does a really good return of serve, we think, oh, maybe we want to yeah. serve differently next time. So I think this is the game, really. It, it is. And that was a little kind of the response. And it was like, well, we can't really do anything about this property. It was like, okay, well, then the commission's going to have to address this because right. clearly something I has like to be done. I agree with Bruce. I think that's a great analogy. And I also think the pilot could be our return serve. So we serve it to them. And if they don't like it, then we say, well, we're proposing a pilot then. That could be our second option so that we yeah, have so that's, that as a backup. That's Again, a very good, that's excellent suggestion. So should we take out any reference here, Ben, to the... Well, and then if they don't like it, we can make it a pilot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I will say I don't. I'm not sure the commission could propose 
like a town-wide bylaw. He could. It, it wouldn't be town-wide. It would just be for the district, right? Yeah, I, I suppose we could, but it, obviously we would have far um, less standing. Uh, right. Our standing would be compromised greatly. Um, so I assume we're talking about one or other or both of the uh, districts. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's in here at the uh, proposal section. Yeah. Okay, are there any more suggested edits? Well, as you go down to the proposed remedy paragraph, yeah. um, Again, uh, I've got uh, uh, where you say a lack of basic maintenance can lead to the. So gradual. this is actually, I should say, this whole piece is taken directly from the Massachusetts Cultural Commission website. That's not my language. Yeah. Well, wow. we can still improve on their language. Yeah, we, we can. Because you can delete that and just put the word "leading." So it says. Uh, addressing buildings that are suffering from the deferred maintenance leading to the gradual deterioration of a building. Yeah, there, there's six, six or eight words there that don't need to be there. But maybe might it suggest then that you make it, make it clear that you're referring to a different towns, townships bylaws in, in this paragraph, if you're using the language of another, from another. Yeah, this is the language of the state well, then I would make it clear that that's the language of the state and that, that you, uh, because I wouldn't have known that. Right, well, to see, as per the explanation on the Massachusetts Historical Commission website, I guess I should quote it, maybe quote it. Yeah, you're right. I make that clear. Uh -huh. Yes, you could quote it. Then I guess my editorial improvements. Right, I'm sorry. I should <laughs> have done as they that. may be or not are irrelevant. But it is implied yeah. that it's a quote, so. Yeah. But maybe we could, after website where it says a minimum, we could put a quote there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and quote it till Whatever the end of that is. paragraph. And then most minimum maintenance bylaws, that's me. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. I'll make that. Thank you. Okay, yeah, all areas in town of Edgar Town. Yes. All of those have to be changed. I'm just going to capitalize town of Edgar Town. Yeah. <laughs> well, so Jennifer, I was working from the uh, from the pasted in language on the email, so I'm probably not seeing. Um, a more sophisticated uh, layout to paragraphing, all that sort of stuff. So right, right. It got it's hard. It's, um, I don't have a, I don't have total clarity in what your. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't have the complete product of your, uh, what you're proposing here. So I may. I may confuse things, mm -hmm. as a result. So then you move to possible language for a minimum uh, maintenance. Well, before Bible. that, there was the paragraph of proposal, which was what we're. Oh. Yes. I thought that was fine. Okay. I just did a no, no doubt no. instead of not doubt. Right. Thank you. Okay. Then possible language. And again, that's the language from the Edgar Town bylaw. Mm -hmm. Because the Edgar Town was the one that seemed to be the only that was embedded in their local historic district language. Yeah. I think I would, I would, um, uh, make a general introduction that that uh, I, I might be inclined to put that as a footnote, so the the information is there, but it's it's not um, it's contextual, but it it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't get as much uh, attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, but we should write this uh, A B C um, the the down through F. Um, as though it's a proposed um, language. And then uh, as a footnote at the bottom, at the beginning. Oh, say that it, from Edgar Town? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that because um, it's useful to tell yeah. people okay, so that- so then you'd say that that paragraph, the minimum maintenance by from that paragraph under where it starts the minimum maintenance language from Edgar Town, put that as the footnote. 
Yes, I'd just say the, 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 the proposed uh, language is based on a historic district bylaw, um, blah, blah, from the town of Edgartown, uh, Massachusetts. Uh -huh. Martha's Vineyard, I guess it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could almost be like uh, also because there's the I have the pictures at the end. It could almost be like an, an appendix, like A and B. One is the pictures, and then one is the proposed bylaw language. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. By footnotes, did you mean like literally in the footer of the paper? on the page that it appears? Yes, right. A footnote, so that you you know you have a little one or an asterisk uh, at the top where it says. It says possible language for a minimum uh, maintenance bylaw, and then there's a, you know, an asterisk or a one or an A or whatever it is that this keys the footnote, and then at the bottom of the page is the reference to Edgartown. That's the, that, that was the way I think it could be done because it takes the uh, it it it, um, it diminishes the graphic uh, importance of the whole thing about Edgartown, which is not that important. It's distracting in a way because it's stopping you from getting to the uh, core of the. the well, this the, is that's the kind of the that's kind of the end of the. You're saying it's stopping you. It's distracting you from getting to the ABC section. Yes, it's so uh, you know when 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 I'm reading stuff, I, 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 I you know I I get irritated by things that are stopping um, the 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 uh, the core intent. Mm. Um, we keep it's not that this is irrelevant it's just not so relevant that it should take up the first paragraph of uh, of, of this uh, section on possible language it should be a small um, note that gives the information oh, I got you. but does not um, it's not the primary it's not the most important thing right it's the least important thing i mean we just want to um Right, it could be in a footnote just to say that one, that language is legal in the state of Massachusetts because <laughs> there is a town using it. Yeah, well, that's implied. Yeah. And this is but I have, I think that's a fine suggestion to put it at the end as a footnote if that. Because then you move straight into the proposed language. Uh, yeah. You right. don't have something that's, so you say, well, where does the actual language start? Right. And the language starts right, right after the word bylaw colon. The bylaw language. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes it's sense. Sorry. I just wasn't I just wasn't understanding at first. Yeah, but the, I, I think this makes a lot of sense. Um so I guess one oh, thing so I you know what? I'm sorry, I was pretty yep. sloppy. So Ben, I could go through it like under A, it mentions Edgar Town, so we'd want to take that out. Uh okay. Yes, and what we should decide here, and I suppose we, for the moment, we should put both of the historic districts in, right? So it should, uh, so it, right. it'll be long. It'll be Amherst. Uh, um, or we could just call it the Amherst Local Historic Districts. We don't have to. Yes, that might be that. better because then that would be a lot better because then right. you again wouldn't be stumbling over something. Right, but, right. Just Amherst um, Local Historic Districts. And and uh, and then if and the uh, council seem to think that we have to be more specific then um we'll add it go at it but i think you're right even so because we could add a third historic district and then we'd have to update this right. and it would be better if we didn't and so i think you're right this is the intelligence yeah and this is interesting they they have more specific language in the rules and regulations of their um historic district commission so that's that's kind of maybe a similar process that we could look at, which is get the authority to enforce a minimum maintenance bylaw. That's through. what I think Edgar Town has. Yeah. And maybe I could contact someone in I or Ben, I don't know who's most appropriate, if, try and find who maybe chairs their local historic commission in Edgar Town. <laughs> yeah. And, and see, find see out how they do see. it. Because it seems like it's something that that commission does just for their historical. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this this bylaw is enables is probably in the general townwide bylaw. Well, I see that enables it, the local historic district. Yeah, but then right. they have more specific language in their rules and regulations. Okay, I see. Which they're in charge of. Um and you know, specifies exactly what how they define state of poor repair. Mm. 
So in the possible language part, um, we changed historic uh, Edgartown historic district to historic Amherst historic districts. Um, and the same with the local district, the a lo uh, Amherst local historic district commission rules and regulations. Um, halfway through that first or two thirds of the way, there's a reference to section four as defined in section four. Well, that's that's a reference in to the Edgartown, Edgartown. so we would so we'll clearly have to get rid of that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if there is a reference uh, that relates to us, um, we would insert it, but, but that's that has to be stricken. Right. So should Ben and I go through this and then this send a copy speak. back to all of you? I was just gonna suggest yeah, that. Yeah, so we don't have to take- Better use of time. Yeah, all your time with that. Um, well, you know, yeah, just- I'll um, go through it with Ben. Briefly, the one thing I was going to say is um, there's a little bit of a mismatch between the substance of the memo above and then what's in subsection B here. Because, like, I guess porch railings is here, but I didn't see anything about paint. shipping paint um, or, you know, I, I guess that was really right. it. Yeah. I think that's a very good suggestion. I was going to suggest that where you say porches and porch railings, uh, you could put porches, including steps and porch railings, because at the moment we don't have steps in there either. Right, okay. And Edgartown's so flat, they probably don't have any steps. <laughs> <laughs> so we could maybe take out chimney or chimney support systems, because that's already part of our bylaw, right? Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll no, no. Not, to, no. Not, to, not to enforce the disrepair of okay. them. So should we add maybe five? I think so. Yeah. And I, I think I'm going to take my leave right now. There's some things going on at home for me okay. to take. That's fine. Okay. I We're not doing any voting. So thank you, Peggy. And okay. we'll, we'll send this out to everybody before it goes to Rob and That's John. Good. Okay, okay, thank you. Have a good okay. holiday. And we'll let you know when the next meeting's scheduled after the new year. Perfect. Okay. okay. Have a good holiday. Thank Bye -bye. you. All of you Bye, too. Thank you. Um, so how do you put peeling paint <laughs> in a way that um, well, I'm just reading how the paragraph above ends. If it says blah blah blah, if if allowed to deteriorate, if um would if allowed to deteriorate cause a detrimental effect no on effect. the character of the district and contributing buildings and structures as follows. So you could be, it, I don't know if you need to say peeling paint, but you could say like just paint or like house exterior paint. You could put peeling slash failing paint too. Failing, That's another way. But yes, exterior paint, okay. It's, you know, it always seems when you bring up paint, they get, well, you know what? You know, not everybody's ha you know, your house doesn't have to be a pristine. Condition. Right, it's not. Yeah. It's not the color right, right. We're, we're talking about. Yeah, we're not talking about. Um, you need some touch up. We're talking about those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess one thing I will say is. Okay, never mind. Actually, um, this is saying a detrimental effect upon the character of the district. It's not saying anything about the buildings themselves. Would, you know collapse or what I'm trying to say is um, you know this is exterior paint it's yes it is important for the integrity of the you know but siding. Right. It's more important for the effect upon right. the character of the district yeah yeah exactly right. exactly exactly okay so does condition of exterior paint work you think yeah I think that's a good way to put it condition of exterior paint my guess is that this is the section that would get the, if this were to go forward, in other words, it might get looked at by uh, the subcommittees to review this or, and, and they would give it almost no consideration except to say, I'm sorry, we're not gonna do it. But to the extent there's some positive inclination to act on this and to actually generate something, my guess is that these uh, items, one, three, one, two, three, four, five, would receive the a huge amount of uh, yeah. <laughs> time and effort, so we're only beginning that. So I think we don't we shouldn't kid ourselves that we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to 
get the get the last word on this. We should do the best we can, but then quickly push it on. And uh, uh, because it's the this is this is the part that other people can can and will get involved in. I I would imagine. Uh, do, would you agree, Jennifer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you want Ben and I to take another shot at this, and then? Ben, does this work to send it out to everyone and they can get back? Because I know in terms of open meeting law, we can't discuss it, but they could get back to you if they have yeah. comments. And then Same those comments could be incorporated. Mm -hmm. And then if we want, we could even get another draft out, but yeah, you know, okay. get yeah. it to Robin. Yeah, that, that, that works okay. well. Yeah. Um, Jim, yes? I just, I just you know, wanted to make a comment. I, Kind of think sometimes the conversation's getting into the weeds here. Yeah. When to get a finished document, I, I agree with the basic thrust of this and the fact that you're going to talk to John Thompson and Rob Mora and, you know, get some feedback as to, as to how it's, you know, can, can work out. So if you and Ben can come up with another draft and send it to us, that's, that's great. Yeah. It's certainly not going to have. Too many complications from my end. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but we will get you a draft before we send it on to them. I think we should do. Yeah. We should do that. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to take up everybody's time going through sentence by sentence. Um, but but Bruce, this was thank. I mean, if you have more you want to add, because this has been very helpful. I got one more. And, okay. and by the way, I I perhaps did dive in a little deep here, but that was because I felt as you probably know, rather guilty by uh, being so derelict as to have completely forgotten the last meeting oh, when, yeah. <laughs> when when this was discussed. So I'm trying to I'm trying to well, I'm thank trying to we appreciate make that. up <laughs> yeah. for absent previous yeah. absence. But the last thing I would uh, say is uh, in F, you we've got the penalty or the fine, and my sense is that we should just um, um, put something like TBD or, or, you know, in other words, just step right back from the fine. But I'm not sure. Do the rest of us agree? Uh, um, do, do we have a sense of, uh, as a commission, what an appropriate penalty would be? Or should we imagine that when it comes to dealing with penalties, we should just uh, push that completely to um, uh, others? Ben, <laughs> um, I will say three hundred is a three hundred per day per violation is a pretty is like fairly uh, steep. No, oh, I was just gonna say it's fairly consistent with oh. with other things. Like I know the violation for the demo delay is three hundred a day. The I think violation of not getting a certificate of appropriateness is probably around there as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I assumed that it came from uh, Edgar Town, um, and I guess it did. But that's even more interesting. It, it's, it it would indicate that there's some statewide consistency here. So maybe it's actually yeah. a very good number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, yeah I will. Go on. I was just going to say I will say like there's been cases where there's like I, or actually I don't know if there's actually been cases like this, but. You know, it's the 300 per day. Like, if something happens like years ago, like a, someone takes down a shed, then they forgot to do the demo delay hearing and all that. Like, yeah. it's it's less about like, oh my god, like 300 per day. That could be like ten th tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> if it's if it's years ago. Um, but often it, it's more of a thing like the town will just say, you know, we could. Uh, uh, fine you this. tens of thousands of dollars or like next time why don't you make sure you do this the right way um because yeah. like and see section f of the <laughs> of the right. new yeah. bylaw but um okay. i i will say i think this bylaw is pretty short um and we don't have to do this now but you know i think there were this is basically a new uh enforcement mechanism that would need a process for you know how do how do we hear complaints who how, do we talk about do we have like 14 days to respond as a commission to whether we want to penalize someone or you know does it do we 
get a ruling from the building commissioner and then so i just think there needs to be a whole process well, that, that um, should be in this next draft then i think yeah there needs to be a process developed for um you know receiving complaints you know i guess like following up on them enforcing it notifying the owner yeah um well, it, it, presumably that's uh, similar to uh, other, uh, we, we could take the language from other um, bylaws, other bylaws. Yeah. And, and I don't know, Jennifer, are you going to call uh, people in Edgartown and Yeah, well, find first out? I'll talk with Ben about what we may have in Amherst, and then if it's appropriate, I'll follow up with that. Uh, yeah. I, I was thinking Edgartown. generally about how it functions. I right. think it was, I think it would, uh, it might be the subject of a, a separate memo that went with the overall proposal that said, uh, you know, just a half page that described the experience of Edgartown. And, I, and Edgartown perhaps would know of other um, jurisdictions in Jurisdiction. Massachusetts with this. Uh, they may have gotten it from someone and, uh, and it would be interesting to know how long it's been enact, in, in, you know, enacted yeah. and, and what their experience is. And I think that would be helpful um, if I were a counselor, I would want to know mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that, anyway, well, there's some concern that, like if it goes before the council, that we're not trying to be Edgar Town because they don't want us to be that effete. But, you know, again, they're, they're the no, you, you would, play of force would be helpful. You would, you would so. write it so that it was purely. Um, Right, it was an Edgar uh, Town, yeah. but yeah. And you can also use Lowell, which I think doesn't have right, the same, but has, right. has a little different feeling, but has, um, <laughs> yes, they I also have the same thing. Okay, yeah, great. Greta just did, uh, did some research and got that to us. I'll definitely look at that. Oh, if, yes, the town council would. Right, right. And they talk about, same thing, architectural features. Anyway, they have, they go into right. detail. Similar okay. to what we're doing. I'll look at that. But Right, so even if we don't get this to Rob, you know, if we get it to them in January, I think that's fine too. If we keep working on the memo. Yeah, I mean, realistically, people are gonna be working at maybe like half capacity for right. the next Between, two weeks anyway, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this won't be at their top of their list before they <laughs> close for the year. Um, What's okay, next? does that sound like, thank you very much, Bruce, and everybody else, and thank you, Greta, for the research on Lowell, and I will thank commit <laughs> to working with, to working on this and getting another draft to Ben, and Ben and I will be in contact, and then we'll, we'll get something out to you all before our next meeting. Which thank is you, Jennifer. Yeah. So, um, will that bring, so, I don't have the agenda right in front of me, uh, Ben, would that Bring us now. I mean, does anybody? Have yeah, that was, that's this? pretty much it. Um, yeah. There's no members of the public here for public comment. So next meeting, do we have any? Did any applications come in? Um, nope. There were there was one um, that came in last week, and we determined it was you know well out of view of the public way, um, and then uh yeah that's, that's pretty much been it it's been very very slow very quiet yeah. um oh okay so then our so at this point our next meeting might just be to continue this conversation if we don't have any new applications yeah yeah and exactly we, right also start yeah and then you and i will also um discuss but we will get it to the committee uh the transmittal that will go out at some point after the new year mm -hmm. letting people know okay so should we just pick a date in January? Yeah, I'm pretty say. available. <laughs> yeah, maybe Me too. mid. I'm not going anywhere. Sad. Maybe mid, maybe mid to late January. Just one, one in case any applications do come in, and two, it'll give us time to um. Right. So January 18th, Monday is uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. So should we do That's it the right. Monday before or after that? Should we say after, which is getting us to the 25th? I would say after because we don't seem to have any urgent right. business. So then Monday after would be the last Monday in January, which is January 25th. Does that work? Yeah. Good for, good okay. for me. Me yeah. too. Um, okay. So we'll see. 
Okay, 4 p.m. Okay. still good okay. for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much, everyone, for your input, and we'll get you back another document. And Ben, I will get you the address on McClellan Street. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me know. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, is I good. I guess just briefly, is there any like precedent for this? Did Brandon or Nate ever write a similar letter that I could <laughs> go off of, or is it is this a little bit of a new a new thing? I don't, the only one I'm aware of is the um, 100 Fearing Street, but that was a little different because they had gone in for a building permit to do their, um, to do the remodel. And they were told then that they needed to get a certificate of appropriateness. Right. And they quote, forgot. And so they started the construction without, so that was easy. They forgot. Brandon, <laughs> right, just had to say, guys, you were, you need to stop because you didn't mm -hmm. do this. And would, uh, how would you feel about just going and knocking on the door and saying, uh, you know, uh, our commission has been discussing and we are curious? Uh, I could, I could do that. Yeah, I think. Um, well, actually, I'm, I am working remotely this week, so I'm over in oh, Northampton, but it's not not too big of a deal to. Yeah. Well, that, that would be the. Urgent. It could be next week. It's not urgent. Yeah. I mean, that would be the. Uh, that would be if I were doing it as a as an individual, with, yeah. under whatever capacity I chose. Um, that's that's what I would do. And then well, yeah, basically I was you're also, figuring out whether you need to write a letter or not. You know. Yeah, I was you also going to say if um if I have the address, there's a way to look maybe through the property viewer and possibly get a phone number or email. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it may be the kind of thing that again, what seems to have come off above, they may be in the process of repairing it or getting a new one. They may already be. But again, I guess they're making a change without to the facade without coming, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and I'll t I can talk to you about that too. Okay. I'd even be happy to walk over there with you if that makes a mm -hmm. difference. Okay. Or Karen Car knows them. Like we're <laughs> all yeah. done okay. time so for tea. So with that, um, I guess I wish everybody a very happy holiday. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hopefully we can- You all. Maybe next and thank you for we can all, all your gather work together. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you for a great year. Happy thank holiday. you for all the work you've done. Oh, no, thank all you, of Jennifer. you. Thank you and thank you, Ben. Mm -hmm. And uh, bye bye. Happy holiday. Bye bye. Happy, Happy New Year. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.